Today we will explore another word of the day. Um, the word of the day is brought to you in conjunction with Gulfport School District and Barksdale Reading Universe. Our word of the day is crucial. Before we get started, let's look at our learning targets. Today we will use word learning strategies to help us understand the meaning of words in text, and we will apply these new strategies to help us better understand the text that we read. So again, the day, the word of our day today is crucial. Please say the word crucial three times with me. Are you ready? Set and go. Crucial, crucial, crucial. Good job. Now grab that vocabulary log and a pencil. I need you to jot this word down into your vocabulary log. Um, say the word out loud and then say the letters aloud as you write them. Ready? Say it with me. Here we go. Crucial. C R U C I A L. Crucial. Let's take a look at a definition for the word crucial and we're going to think about the picture that's on our screen. So before we look at the definition, let's tap our prior knowledge. That's a really important strategy that we can use to help us understand words and to understand text that we read. So prior knowledge, things I already know. Take a look at the picture. What do you notice? Yeah, lots of veggies, huh? And vegetables are good for our bodies, aren't they? They're crucial to our health. Now let's take that and bring that over into a dictionary definition or denotation. So the dictionary definition for crucial is something that's extremely important. And crucial is an adjective. Let's look at a few sentences that include the word crucial and we'll think about how the word crucial is used. Please read these sentences out loud with me. We'll start with the first sentence together. Are you ready? Set and go. We have a crucial decision to make about braces. Oh gosh. Okay, so if the word crucial means something is extremely important, how can a decision about braces be crucial? Yeah, braces cost a lot of money and it also cost um, or will cause some lifestyle changes. And so investing in braces for someone is Crucial, well, that's a really important decision. So crucial works well in that sentence. Let's take a look at the next example. Read the second sentence aloud with me. Ready, set, and go. My mom believes that vitamins are crucial for my health. Hmm. Yeah, crucial works in this sentence also because we know what our mom thinks is super important. And if mom says vitamins are good for our health, well, that's because she knows they are, so it's very important. Take a look at the last sentence. Read the last sentence out loud with me. Think about the word crucial and what it means in the sentence. Here we go. Annie thinks deciding which shoes to wear is a crucial decision. Hmm, let's think about this sentence. So if crucial is something that is very important, like eating vegetables or taking vitamins to stay healthy or deciding how we spend our money, if those are really important decisions, is our decision on which pair of shoes to wear crucial? No, not always, but we may think that it is, especially if our friends have a new pair of shoes and we wanna show them our new shoes too, right? Good. Let's look at a few more examples just to give us more practice with the words crucial. So think about the item represented in each picture and whether or not the item is crucial or super important to day-to-day -day life. Okay, the first picture is a race car. Is a race car crucial? No, they're a lot of fun to watch and play with if you have maybe some Hot Wheels race cars at home, but it's not crucial that we have race cars to have a good life. What about a house? Is a house crucial? Yeah, not necessarily a house, but some sort of shelter. 
Um, we may live in a smaller house or a larger house. We may live in an apartment house or a trailer house. There are all kinds of shelters that we may live in, and having shelter is crucial. How about video games? What do you think? Is that crucial or not crucial? No, we don't have to have video games to be healthy. And finally, what about clothes? Crucial? Oh yeah, we need to wear our clothes. Very good. Let's look at a different word learning strategy. So you and I have worked really hard on our Freyer model, and I encourage you to continue to use the Freyer model to help you work with new words. However, there are multiple word learning strategies we can use. And so here, we're gonna take a look at a T-chart that we can use to help us separate things that are crucial from those that are not crucial. So remember, crucial means something that is very, very important. I listed a few examples. So things that are crucial are things such as water, food, family, and health. Things that are not crucial, even though I may enjoy them, I don't have to have them, are things like toys or candy. Social media and even TV, those are not crucial items. I encourage you to draw this T-chart in your vocabulary log and see if you can add two more items to each column. Now, though, we're going to read one of my very favorite stories, and I'm so excited to read this story with you. Um, I hope that you enjoy this story as much as I do. Although this does say for pre-K through second grade, that is because there's a read aloud available on YouTube. Um, of course, with your parent or guardian, I encourage you to go back and listen to this story a second or even a third time. I think you'll really love it. But I have some things that I want us to think about. So we have our during reading strategy, so we want to establish a purpose for reading. So we're going to preview some questions that I want us to think about as we read. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's the first question. How is the cr tree crucial to the boy? All right. So how is the tree very important to the boy? Secondly, in the story, how did the tree help the young boy, the man, and the old man? Hmm about that one and then last but certainly not least what is the lesson or moral of the story gosh let's talk about this one just for a second so when i read stories many times there's a lesson that i can learn so something that i can learn through the problem or conflict that the main character had in the story that lesson i can also call a moral and when I get even older, I'll see that I'll begin to call that theme. So I want you to really think about that and thinking about how crucial the tree was to the boy will help us to determine the lesson or moral of the story, okay? So one of my very favorite books, I hope you enjoy. Here we go, The Given, Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Once there was a tree and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. Let me pause here for just for a second. So what kind of tree is this? Yeah, it's an apple tree. So the author didn't tell us directly it was an apple tree but I can infer because while the boy was playing in the tree, climbing the trunk and gathering the leaves and making crowns from those leaves, he was also eating apples. So I can infer or guess that the tree is an apple. And they would play hide and seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. Poor tree. Then one day the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, Come, boy, come and climb up my trunk, and swing from my branches, and eat apples, and play in my shade, and be happy. 
I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I am too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? Let's pause here just for a second and take a look at the illustration or picture that's on your screen. The character that you see there is not a little boy anymore, is he? No, he's a grown man now. And when he was a little boy, he used to play in the tree and keep the tree company. And then when he was a little bit older, a younger man, he went back to the tree. Do you remember why he went back to the tree? Yeah, he wanted money. Now, what does he want from the tree? He wants a house. That's right, let's see what happens next. Let's see if the tree can give the boy or the man a house. I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. What happens to a tree if we cut off all of the tree's branches? It's not as strong anymore, is it? it? Loses all of its leaves and we know it needs its leaves so that it can grow. Kind of selfish of the boy, isn't it? And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come boy, she whispered, come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. Why do you think the tree is not really happy? He took her whole trunk, didn't he? We'll see what happens next. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but have, I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I'm sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down. Sit down and rest. And the tree was happy. How could the tree be happy? She has nothing left to give. No leaves, no apples, no branches, and no trunk. Yeah, she had her boy back, didn't she? Leanne, I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I do. Let's take a look back at some of the questions I asked you to think about before we start reading. Let's see if we can answer these questions now. Number one, are trees crucial to the boy? So what about this tree? Was this tree crucial to the boy? Wait, what does crucial mean again? Very good, extremely important. Yes, this tree was very important to the boy because he needed the tree to help him grow into an old man, right? What about number two? 
in the story, how did the tree help the young boy, the man, and the old man? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I agree with you. The tree gave supplies to the boy, the crucial elements that the boy needed in order to move to the next part of his life. So what then can we learn? Question three, what is the lesson or moral of the story? Remember when we get older, we'll call this theme, okay? What can we learn? Well, I learned that I need, I can give selfish, selflessly, just like the tree. So the tree gave and gave to the boy and the man and the old man, but never expected anything in return. But ultimately, even though the tree didn't get anything, she was still happy. So I learned that from the story. I wonder what you learned. There's another great article you can read. Um, you can find the article, The Panama Canal on ReadWorks. And that passage is going to be really appropriate for our third through fifth grade friends. However, kindergarten through second, this is a great passage to read with your parent or guardian. So I encourage you to take a look at this passage and see what information in there helps us to understand how crucial the Panama Canal is. I have a few questions to help you establish your purpose for reading as you read. Um, so they're here for you on the screen. Let's take a look at some ways we could use the word crucial this week. For reading, you can listen to a video about why eating healthy foods is crucial. At the end, um, think about the food groups, watch one of the videos and create a menu for supper that includes healthy foods. And that brings us into the next activity we can do to engage with the word crucial this week. We can write about crucial things. Make a menu. Maybe a three-day menu that you can um, use at home for healthy meals for you and your family. Include the five food groups and the number of servings that are crucial to being healthy. And then finally, continue with the same theme and thinking about the word crucial for speaking and listening. You can pretend you are a TV chef and share with your family your menus. Then select one dish to demonstrate how to prepare and cook. So this could be a lot of fun, but of course we need our parent or guardian because we may need to use a stove or oven or something sharp to cut our food. Um, get a family member to video you making this meal and um, emphasize that it is crucial, very important to eat healthy. For even more fun, um, elementary, you can write a whole book for upper elementary, write a letter to your school principal explaining why being taught at school is crucial to you being a strong student or why you think being able to learn from home is crucial. So you could pick a side on this and write a letter. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your day today. Until next time. <music>